What is the Mac Palo Android Nonce? Let's talk about resveratrol. Is it a good supplement to use? What's the dose that you need to use? Or is it something that you need to avoid at all costs? Let's dive in. So when you go to most websites and you ask, what is a good aromatase inhibitor? A lot of guys will say that resveratrol is good. And the thing is, most people have not really done their research. That's why they're saying it. So is it a good aromatase inhibitor? This is why people think that it is a good aromatase inhibitor. So the study, they used different concentration. This was in vitro, and in cell cultures, not even in animals or in humans. This was cell cultures. And it showed the different concentrations was able to lower aromatase by 55 and 75% respectively. That seems like a damn good aromatase inhibitor. Imagine your aromatase is going down by 75%. That's exactly what I'm looking for. The amount used will be around 100 grams of resveratrol daily. And the average supplement is 500 milligrams to one gram. Is it still that good? This is the problem with in vitro studies. Look amazing. What dose do they use? Oh, that's completely unreasonable. The mechanism of action is by lowering COX, which promotes inflammatory prostaglandins like BDE2. And this is the enzyme that's been inhibited by non-inflammatory steroidal NSAIDs like aspirin, ibuprofen, and so on. And they block inflammation. That could mean that the regular COX inhibitors like aspirin could lower aromatase just as effectively. And yes, aspirin has been shown to increase testosterone and lower excessive aromatase. So prostaglandin E2 stimulates CAMP, which then stimulates these promoter regions on aromatase. So as you can see, like this is the aromatase and it has a bunch of promoter regions. So if any of these uh, regions are being stimulated, aromatase activity will go up. So you will see that glucocorticoids, prostaglandins, gonadotropins, gynostin, etc. will stimulate some of these promoter regions increasing your estrogen. So this was a human study. It's only one human study that I can find on this. In this pilot study, researchers gave post-menopausal women, which is obviously not healthy young men, with a BMI of more than 25, a daily dose of 3 grams of resveratrol for 12 weeks. They experienced no significant change in estrone or testosterone, but did get a 22% increase in estradiol and a 10% increase in SSPG. Before, after. So you can still see the estrogen is low. It's like a 12 and a 15, which is even low for a male. So maybe this increase was good for them because they have low estrogen to begin with. But it could also mean that resveratrol stimulates aromatase instead of inhibiting aromatase because testosterone didn't change, but estradiol went up. So it's clearly showing that it's not a good aromatase inhibitor. Aromatase inhibitor is something that's going to inhibit aromatase regardless of the individual. If you use exemestane or aromasin or something like that, it's going to lower your estrogen. That's what an aromatase inhibitor does. But on the plus side, produced a favorable increase in the concentrations of urinary 2-hydroxyestrone. This is an estrogen receptor antagonist. And the ratio of 2-hydroxyestrone to 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone, which is a strong estrogen receptor agonist. So 16-alpha is an agonist to estrone, hydroxyestrone is an antagonist. So the higher your 2-hydroxyestrone is, the more anti-estrogenic you will be. So this is one of the reasons why people can also supplement DIM because it improves the ratio as well. But I've talked about DIM before, so be sure to check out that video before you get yourself some DIM. So as you can see, it quite drastically improved this ratio, which could mean that they were less estrogenic despite estrogen going up slightly. So the best way to really analyze your estrogen levels in the body is to do a Dutch test because your body creates estradiol, estrone, and estriol, and then it metabolizes it into 2-hydroxyestrone, 16-hydroxyestrone, 4-hydroxyestrone, and so on. So there's 16 or more metabolites of estrogen in the body. So if you just look at like a blood test of estradiol, it's not going to give you a good indication of your total estrogen burden on the body. So if you want to look at this ratio of 2-hydroxy to 16-hydroxyestrone, you can do a Dutch, Dutch, a Dutch test to see this. So you can see this person is very estrogenic, right? They have a high level of this 16-hydroxy and the low level of 2-hydroxyestrone, meaning they are more estrogenic even at the same level of... And then also resveratrol has been shown to be an estrogen receptor agonist. Like most phytochemicals, chemicals, resveratrol is a phytoestrogen. Although resveratrol is a weak estrogen agonist, considerably less potent than estradiol, it produces a maximal level of induction that was two to three fold greater than that achieved by estradiol, making it a super agonist. And then the study also suggested that the dose necessary to exert estrogenic effects is equivalent to those that are required for its reported anti-inflammatory effects. So if you're going to use like one gram, you might start to experience estrogenic effects from resveratrol. So how estrogenic is it really? Resveratrol at a dose of one gram per day 
for six consecutive days did not antagonize the effects of estradiol so there was no competition at the receptor resveratrol had no estrogenic activities on its own and no anti-estrogenic activities in combination with estradiol so even though it's applied to estrogen it doesn't seem to be that potent at least in humans even high dose injections didn't cause estrogenic effects so this is a quote from the study they, these results indicate that resveratrol does not possess sufficient in vivo agonistic properties to the estrogen receptor expressing tissue. So it's not going to have any estrogenic effects, but it's also not really going to lower your aromatase. Then on another bad point, resveratrol inhibits estrogen detoxification. So you have phase one detoxification and then phase two detoxification. The body de detoxes many compounds via the process of glucuronidation and conjugation. Calcium deglucurate, which is a common supplement used for detoxification, promotes glucuronidation. Resveratrol has been shown to inhibit glucuronidation, thus increasing active estradiol. So even though it might not actually increase your estradiol, as mentioned by the postmenopausal woman, maybe the increase in estradiol was due to the impaired detoxification of estradiol. But then also testosterone would have gone up. So we're not exactly sure why the estradiol went up. It's a lot of speculation that can happen. The point is, it's probably not going to lower your estrogen. And also, another cherry on the cake, it might lower certain androgens. At one gram a day, and this is in humans, transresveratrol lowered the serum levels of androstenedione dione by 24%, DHA by 41%, and DHA sulfate by freaking 50%. These are huge numbers. However, prostate size and levels of PSA, testosterone, free testosterone, DHT remained unchanged. At least it doesn't inhibit your 5 alpha reductase. So high DHA sulfate is inversely correlated with mortality and frailty. By it. So lowering it is likely not a good thing. So DHA goes down, cortisol stays the same, really not improving that ratio in a good way. So if you are using resveratrol to inhibit your aromatase, throw that in the bin. It's not going to do it unless you have blood tests to prove me wrong. Then I would love to see that. So please comment below. There are a lot of better aromatase inhibitors out there like Damiana, Passionflower, Zinc, and so on. You don't have to use resveratrol to get the job done. It's pretty useless. Don't use it. It might actually increase your estrogen levels. And if you would like to maximize your testosterone, I have a free ebook on that. Link is in the description below. I hope you learned something new and I will check you in the next one. Cheers, guys.